never forget Black Tuesday, the 67 bushfires, when 62 people lost their lives, 1,000 homes destroyed, personal possessions lost, sheep, cattle and horses burned to death. On that day of the Holocaust, great walls of flame raced across paddocks, devouring everything before it, pushed along by hot northerly winds. In the forested areas, the inferno raced through trees at amazing speed, catching everyone by total surprise. It was a matter of days before the full effect of the fires was fully realised. There were staggering tales of heroism, the stories of the lucky ones, the grief of relatives who lost loved ones, and the reorganisation by the authorities to get help where it was needed most. Such was the will of the people that the first home rebuilt and occupied was only 18 days after the fire. Special appeals and grants were made to fire victims, and people started to rebuild their shattered lives. But it was a bad period for livestock. The state was going through its driest period for 127 years, and the fires cleaned up almost every piece of vegetation. Farmers were forced to kill thousands of lambs for want of fodder. TVT6 began an appeal to homeowners to deposit any lawn clippings at various depots, and these were whisked quickly off to starving stock in the fire-ravaged areas around Hobart. The seriousness of the fires brought a visit to Tasmania by the Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Philip. He was met on arrival at the airport by the Premier, Mr Eric Rees, and then taken on a tour of the worst affected areas. Prince Philip travelled through many towns and stopped and chatted with people who had lost their homes, and also quenched his thirst with a few of the locals along the way. It was also a bad year for the HEC. Water reserves were down to only 16% of capacity due to sustained drought in catchment areas. The state government decided to introduce daylight saving legislation to conserve power. It was also announced that there would be industrial power rationing with bulk supplies cut by 35% and domestic users forced to cut back by 20%. The severity of rationing should be increased as far as bulk consumers are concerned. It will now be taken from 25 to 35 per cent uh, from the commencement of December. And there will be a further reassessment of the water storage position in February, and a public statement will then be made as to whether it is necessary to continue rationing at that level or whether it can be uh, relieved in some way. At the same, same time, it's proposed to put on a formal basis a 20% rationing of domestic consumers. And all domestic consumers will be asked and are now asked to do all that they possibly can uh, to save consumption of power in their homes, in their businesses, or in any other way that it may be used domestically. After 10 years' endeavour, Mr John Steer's bill for daylight saving appears certain to be accepted in the Legislative Council. It's already been passed in the House of Assembly. Mr Steer, when is it to be debated in the Legislative Council? The Legislative Council will be debating the bill tonight, and I would think that they would finish the debate tonight, and we will know tonight whether daylight saving will be law this summer or not in Tasmania. Mr Steer, in your travels around the state, what sort of acceptance has there been of the bill? Well, I've always thought that uh, a majority of people were in favour of daylight saving, but I've been quite surprised at the massive acceptance of daylight saving right throughout the state. It's it's most encouraging. Apart from the power saving that this is going to mean to Tasmania, who's going to benefit most by daylight saving? Well, everyone will benefit in some way or another, particularly those who, uh, for recreational purposes, health-wise, the extra sunshine and daylight that we're going to enjoy. And anyone who plays sport, anyone who has a garden, it'll give them time for during the on the weekend. Everyone, I think, will get some benefit from it.